Welcome to the drama life of World War II. Hitler shook hands with British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain, and with his French counterpart, Edward Daldier. There would be no war because the Germans were content to dominate Austria and Czechoslovakia. Or so they thought. But within Hitler, there was no diplomat. Just a conqueror, and a very violent one at that. The CCC simulated an alleged attack by Polish troops on a German radio antenna. The Nazis already had an excuse, and on September 1, 1939, they attacked Poland mercilessly, killing military and civilians and destroying 75% of the region. World War II had begun. The Nazis were eager to implement a new military tactic that they called Lightning War. It consisted of concentrating the greatest possible number of artillery in a narrow front. Thus, a gap was opened in the enemy lines. And that's how they invaded. Poland, Denmark, Norway. Belgium, the Netherlands, Luxembourg, Yugoslavia. Greece and France. But in France, Hitler made a mistake. He sent his soldiers to reorganize instead of annihilating the Allied army, which was evacuated in Dunkirk thanks to the help of hundreds of private boats. True unsung heroes. It was in this battle that Majek began to be known. The famous intrepid soldier who fought with a sword and bow during the war. The last man in history to kill his enemy with a bow and arrow. After the evacuation, it was England's turn. But Germany couldn't compete with the British troops that prevailed in the sky. Germany wanted revenge. But before, he decided to increase his resources. How? Nothing less than attacking the USSR and Operation Barbarossa of 1941. It was a bloody battle where the USSR lost a terrible number of soldiers. In fact, only two out of ten men born in 1923 in the Soviet Union survived this war. What the Germans didn't count on was General Winter. The true protagonist of the battle, and he had truly managed to stop the Nazi army. The USSR soldiers were also cold, but had their tricks. For example, there were bigger boots to fill them with straw. And while the Nazis were cold in Russia, the Japanese went into action against the United States in the attack on Pearl Harbor. This was the trigger for the United States to go to war. The conflict was already completely worldwide. The youngest soldier of the Second World War belongs to the United States. Shortly after the attack by Japan, he joined the Navy lying about his age. He was only 12 years old when he was decorated for being wounded in combat. Of course, when they learned his true age, he went straight to jail. On August 23, 1942, the Battle of Stalingrad began. The bloodiest in history. The city in ruins became a real last trap for the Nazis. When the German commander Friedrich Paul surrendered, nearly two million people had already died. The Nazi army had to withdraw from the Caucasus. The Allies break into Italy and disarm the Mussolini dictatorship. Russian troops start advancing through Europe to Berlin, while the Allies carry out the Normandy landing, which overflowed the German defenses. Paris was released from the Nazis by the Spanish Republicans of the Nine, and it was just at this point in the war that the Nazi death camp surfaced, where six million prisoners died. Many of those who were able to escape, it was thanks to the Monopoly board game that the British sent their prisoners with encrypted messages. On March 26, the United States took Iwo Jima and Berlin fell to the Soviets. On April 30, 1945, Hitler committed suicide with Eva Braun. Germany surrendered. After the bombing of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan also surrendered. And on August 14, 1945, the Second World War was over. Although Russia and Japan never signed to peace, so theoretically, the war is not yet over for them. And that's the draw of my life of World War II. What is the most interesting part for you in this conflict? Leave it in the comments. And you already know, give us a like and subscribe if you haven't already. And now, the funniest comments of our drama life, Summer vs. Winter.